Visitors of Vietnam will undoubtedly rave about the Café Sua Da, or iced coffee with milk, that they couldn't stop drinking while in the country. I must admit, it's addictive. Even more so than a normal cup of joe. It's sweet and chocolatey. You want to consume it as fast as possible, but it deserves to be savored. A Café Sua Da is traditionally brewed at your table in a café fin. The brown liquid slowly drips into a generous helping of condensed milk. When the French introduced coffee to Vietnam in the 1850s, it was difficult to get fresh milk, so condensed milk was used because it lasted longer and didn't need to be refrigerated. Even when UHT milk became widely available in Vietnam, the Vietnamese stuck with condensed milk, and for good reason. It's absolutely delicious and the sweetness really works well with the coffee beans in Vietnam. However, the problem is they're packed with calories. One iced coffee might have 150 to 200 calories and 30 grams of sugar. That's about the equivalent to 7.5 teaspoons. Compare that to espresso, which has around 21 calories and 4 grams of sugar. So why not just stop adding the condensed milk? Well, you'll still need a few tablespoons of sugar to cut down on the bitter taste of the Robusta beans. Have you ever seen Vietnamese coffee for sale at your supermarket? Probably not. And yet Vietnam is the number two producer of coffee in the world. So where are all those beans going? Because most of the beans are low quality, the majority of them are used for instant coffee. 97% of Vietnamese coffee is Robusta. This is probably because it's easier to grow and more resistant to diseases. Recently, $20 million went into building an instant coffee factory in Vietnam, but very little money is being invested in making the beans better. It's high volume over high quality. However, there are efforts being made to change that. During our trip to Dalat, we found quite a few places selling high quality Arabica beans. It's not bad. For example, La Viette Cafe brewed some of the best coffee I've ever tasted. Even smaller coffee shops are taking matters into their own hands, sourcing quality Arabica beans and roasting them for optimal flavor. I sat down with Lop, the owner of L3, a small cafe in Binyung province. He's my go-to coffee guy, a master barista, a savage Chinese chess player, and unfortunately a speaker of Vietnamese only. made this machine. I don't know how, but uh, he probably had some help, but it's pretty cool. We're waiting for uh, room house. We're waiting for uh, room, room house. What? Uh, 200? Hi, oh, hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. The beans are in. Uh, okay. This is the espresso beans. How long? <laughs> 12 to 16 minutes. quickly as possible. It's still pretty hot. Not too bad though, really. Back going in. Espresso is done. With the Vietnamese coffee, they add a lot of ingredients. Rice wine, sugar, salt, fish sauce, and butter. that we're spraying on it. This is the rice wine and a little bit of sugar, some salt, and the fish sauce. You can probably tell that Lop is passionate about coffee. That passion was obvious to me the first time I walked into L3. It's the main reason I came back again and again. In that time, I've seen his business expand with new equipment, new coffee blends, and an interior makeover that included a hand-painted mural that featured yours truly. We're just uh, 
try and some beans now. We're gonna try to copy that. Traditional Vietnamese-style coffee isn't going away. It just won't happen, and I certainly don't want it to. But a rise in popularity of Arabica beans means higher quality coffee in Vietnam, which ultimately will help Vietnam be recognized as a true coffee powerhouse, and not just a caffeine fix.